What's up guys and gals, my name is Splatterkin and we are here at the Nerd Castle with another episode of Mountain Blade Warband. This episode's going to be a little bit different than all of the 71 or 72 that preceded it, simply because this is our first shot with our own kingdom. Now we do have a few problems that we need to deal with. First things first is we have a bunch of guys that are kind of eyeing our land suspiciously. And so I feel like we probably are in a good spot to beat them up. Hugu's party. Is he going to be an enemy? I bet he is. He's running away whenever we get near him. Yeah. So, we're not at war with anybody as far as I know. Our faction relation- Oh no, Nords are pretty angry at us. So it appears as though we are at war with multiple factions. And that's gonna, not going to leave me a whole lot of leeway to go out and recruit more troops as I had wanted to. The downside to this being, I guess we'll upgrade some of our troops here. Give us everything that we have because this first burst of enemies is going to force us into a spot where we have to win. Otherwise, our budding kingdom will be cut short. And they can come in all they want. I'm just going to wait here and they can siege all that they would like to. And so now that they've gotten close, we're going to jump them. And so there it is right there. Our first battle is going to be 98 versus 109. This episode is largely going to be us just throwing down. And this is a field that does not benefit as much because we're fielding a lot of cavalry. So what we want to do here is let's get to the apex of the hill. Or the crest, I guess, if you wanted to say that. What we'll do is we'll arrange our infantry in such a way that they can't be rode down on by any of the cavalry that they're going to be fielding. They may be able to come up this side of the hill. Cavalry, I don't really want the cavalry to do anything either. Where's my dismount? Let's see here. We have dismount there. Let's go ahead and have our cavalry dismount. And the cavalry, I'm going to put them out here in the line with everybody else because we don't really have an option. These guys should all be slowed down fairly easily. Once they make it to our line, so there we are. We've got everybody assembled. Much like a fine Lego kit. Because I do enjoy Legos, even though I have no talent for the craft. And I will call it a craft, because there's some pretty crazy shit out there that people have made with Legos. Absolute insane things, like recreating New York and stuff like that. It's like, wow, were you bored, or how did this happen? And then it ends up on the internet, and they become famous overnight, and I'm just like, damn, you just got famous for Legos, my friend. Good on you. But anyways... We've got our construct in place, and for now, I think we're just going to hang out and fire arrows at everybody. If we can limit our losses... Okay, so I've got them beat it in now. Put a couple arrows on these guys as they cover the hill. Missed his foot by a little bit, but I got him on that one. If I got shot in the foot with an arrow, I'd be like, Ah, what are the chances? Why? It's such a small amount of surface area. How could you shoot me there? I'd be upset if I got shot in the foot. I... That would be a problem if you sundered my carpels. Or no, that's not my carpel. If you sundered my tarsals. There we are. If my tarsals were sundered by a bolt. And from what I understand, I was looking into this, and a crossbow bolt seems like it could do a lot more damage than you would expect. It seems like a nasty wound to have. I'm going to try and get rid of some of these guys with the longer pikes, because they're going to be crashing into our front lines. And they have the ability to outrange us just slightly. There's that first yellow, unfortunately. I was hoping we wouldn't get any yellow on this one. I wanted to keep myself unshowered with the yellow colors. As beautiful as they are in the proper arrangement, I don't want them in my combat lock. How do we lose? Ugh. Damn it. Alright, let's send out the infantry now that we've thinned them out. Because it seems like they're in full-on skirmish mode, and I can't allow that to happen. And so our first victory appears to be complete. Oh, they've got reinforcements. So I think what I'd like to do is we're going to bring back the infantry. Let's set them back and in over here so that we can do the same thing on this run. I don't see a lot of guys over there with shields. And since they're not covering their faces at all, that means that they are prime targets to be punctured and perforated by our piercing bolts from the sky. Our, holes, our horse is being shot. I said our holster is being shot, which is the weirdest thing to come to mind. But you would be absolutely surprised where the mind goes after you've spent the last year just kind of talking to yourself, playing video games. Anything goes at that point. Anything goes. I think they could probably use some reinforcement up here in the line, so let's bring up the remainder of our cavalry because I don't want them hanging back right now. We should be pretty close to out of bolts at this point, I think. I'm just going to let them skirmish for just a minute. Now that the skirmishing is done, we're going to have everybody rush in. If I can handle this guy with a giant battle axe before anybody else has to, I'd like to take that on myself. As a leader, when you're riding around the battlefield, you kind of want to pick priority targets. Those guys, and I know I'm saying this as I'm wiping out tier 0 troops, but that guy with like the battle axe, what I've noticed is the enemy tends to do a pretty good job 
at making sure they pick their swings pretty well once they get more elite. One more down right there. And I'm going to spend the rest of my time since our health is so low, allowing everybody else to clean up the field. Just letting them get their Kleenex on there, Mr. Clean. They've all been shaving their heads and wearing earrings anyways. Whose idea was it to give Mr. Clean an earring? Was he just made after the guy that made the company? Always wondered that. Why does Mr. Clean have an earring? I mean, why does anybody have an earring for that point? I have earrings, and I don't have to explain it to anybody, so I guess I'm being a little bit hypocritical here. But Mr. Clean is an icon. He is that dude on the front of the bottle. And so I'd like an explanation. Is it a magic earring? Because I always thought that he was sort of like a magical genie or something. Every time I see Mr. Clean, he's got like an effervescent ass thing going on, where he's got like smoke around his middle region. And so either his ass is on fire, or the other possibility is I guess he's just steamy or something. I don't know. But every time I see Mr. Clean, I just wonder as to why he has an earring. Why I think about it so much, I couldn't tell you. In the dark of the night, the things that bother me that should not be explained. Let's finish off this guy over here since he's slowing up our battle. He decided to just like take the back. There we go. So one more guy down. There's going to be a few more fights that we're going to have to square away. I don't know how diplomacy is done once you become a lord. And I don't want to get trapped into a position where I'm just sitting around defending. I'm going to say that he fought well and we're going to allow him to go. Continue capturing his troops. To a certain extent, we are at one point going to have to fly out and find ourselves a little bit of the extra provisions while we wait. The castle remains under siege, oddly enough. And until we run all these guys off, we don't really have a choice. I don't know where Metheld went either. I'm assuming it's probably going to take her about a week to raise up some troops. I don't know how exactly that's going to work either. I did assign her to be a noble, and explaining what I did in the last episode, the reason we decided on her to be a noble is because she is nobility where she comes from in the first place, which is how you want to set that up. If anybody is not of gentle birth, you don't want them to be a noble in your kingdom because it makes everybody else grumpy. We're old-fashioned here in Calradium. No good, I thought that was like my normal troops. And I'm going to ride around the back lines here without catching an arrow, I think, although I'm going to steer away from anybody with a spear. Because that makes me feel nervous. We're at really, really low health, and if we get knocked out right now, that is it. 100% the battle will be over. We lost a Rodok Sharpshooter for some reason. One of those random things, I guess. Is that it? No. Okay, so the things that we want to set up right now is we've got to make ourselves a buffer so that we can go out and recruit, which is always a little bit of a scary thing. We lost a sharpshooter, everything else. You fought well, you were free to go, and so now he's welcoming. If anybody's your friend, they're less likely to attack you. I am going to replenish my troops from any source, from any wellspring that we can. And so now what we want to do is we've got to buy ourselves a little bit of time. So I'm going to manage my garrison, and I think what I'm going to do here is we're going to take everybody... And we're going to pile them into the castle. So that means I'm going to be riding around with zero troops. And my goal in all this is just to go out and get myself some more armies. If I can have 300 to 400 men that I can fall back on here in my castle, that means that this is going to be pretty much unassailable. And that's what we want. We don't want anybody to get bold. We, even if the king shows up, we want him to be deflected from our castle. This has to be our central bastion about which nobody ever falters. Got to make ourselves a nice, strong foothold. This has to be our spot that never falters while everything else is crumbling around us. Although I would prefer that nothing crumble around us. If I had to choose, I didn't want to do the whole Silent Hill thing where the walls are peeling off. My bathroom is doing that right now, and it's quite disgusting. That's a bad thing. When your bathroom becomes Silent Hill, that's when you have to start worrying about the fact that there may be mold spores or something that might potentially injure you. There we are. So we've got everybody stocked up here now. And while we're managing the garrison, I may as well drop off all of my prisoners as well. I don't think they're going to be useful to me at all. But we have endless storage right here, and just in case we ever get one of those quests again where they're like, hey, bring me five or six of these because this is an arbitrary quest that we are throwing down the pipe for you. Just in case that ever happens again, it's something to think about. Let's recruit from Bulabon first, since it's our own, or since it's our own land. We're at war with Nords right now, which means we're not going to have a whole lot of luck recruiting from there. I'm going to go out maybe to Vagir's. And they're not happy with me either, which is disappointing. There's a couple right there. We'll go off to Ayiki, Yiki, Yiki, Yiki. It seems like a city that you could sample its name. Just Ayiki, Yiki, Yiki, and then drop a beat super thick in the background. And I'm going to try and max out my troops while I'm out here recruiting. I don't know if it'll happen or not because we are under siege by a lot of guys. 
Ooh, they don't like me either. My past indiscretions are now coming back to haunt me. Yeah, I've been raiding too much, and everything else has been raided already. Now, we're not going to be able to recruit anything from the outlying lands of the Nords. God, I am just making friends out here, unfortunately. We also need to buy food while we're here. That's the other thing that I hadn't really thought of yet. And so we'll buy some food from one of the capitals while we're in the vicinity. The nice thing about garrisoning all those top-tier troops as well... Oh, good. Oh, my God. That is a lot of people trying to murder me. So let's draw back. And unfortunately, while they're not super high tier, fighting through the bush, we're doing our machete action. I always like saying machete, machete. I like saying it that way better. It's just more pleasing to the tongue, I suppose. It's like honey versus the possible. You know what is really gross? I got sick a while back and my, my significant other, my girlfriend made me echinacea tea. Oh, echinacea tea is the grossest thing I've ever tasted in my life. I don't mind tea, but echinacea, ugh, that's something that should not enter your body ever. Alright, so let's get back to Saramish and recruit some more people. What number are we at? 29? That's not very good. And are they happy with me or are they going to attack me? I'm always worried somebody's going to run me down in the field out here. Now we're getting... Yeah, we're going to get ourselves some Rodok guys here, which is really, really good. We have our oil press. Let's go to the market and buy some food while we're here. We'll sell off some of these loverly bits. We do have a heavy steps charger, but I don't think I'm going to hold on to it for now. I'd rather just have a bunch of money and a bunch of food. The good thing about Rodox is that they do have really nice lands for farming. They don't tell you this in the game, but different places have different fertilities, so different locations will produce different amounts of food. And it may just be a difference of their exports, but Rodox does pretty well when it comes to es exports, so I almost said esports. Not esports, they're not super good at StarCraft, but they are, they're okay. I've seen their StarCraft team, it's lackluster. Like, I think they have the they have the capability to fall back on Banelings a little too often, I think. And so, I, if they really mix their game up, and I think they use their Archons a little bit better, like, maybe they swap teams because the Banelings, eh, you know, Zerg players being what they are, it is what it is. But I think if they mixed it up, they got themselves a little bit more variability about their early game, and they kind of, ta I don't even know what I'm talking about right now, and I don't know if it's apparent. I'm just, like, throwing random buzzwords out there that I've heard other people talk about when it comes to esports. And so, I, I think I'm going to stop now before I feel foolish. Uh, somebody just jumped us. I am going to have to pull back, leaving some troops behind. Go on, the sacrifice of these men will make the rest kind of happy, or at least unhappy, and then we'll go do something else. I haven't upgraded anybody yet. I wasn't paying attention. I was using fast forward too much. It's a big issue. It's because I grew up in the era of the cassette tape, and so I find myself just fast forwarding way, way too much. I don't think I can recruit from them as of yet until we make peace. So let's have a look. God. What is this? Oh my god, why are you guys running around the forest like a bunch of bandits? So there's even more morale gone. I need to just... Apparently they're going to force me to creep across the battlefield as slow as we can. We're probably going to run into... Oh, party morale's fine. Whatever, who cares. Let's do our upgrades now in case that happens again, because I do think we can make a pretty good stand if we can get all these Swadians upgraded into or into cavalry. So I'm going to try and turn these into Swadian knights, and then we're going to steamroll everything that we can. We'll get our crossbowmen all into place too. And for now, it appears as though we're not going to be using any of the troops of our race. We're going to be riding around carefully, hoping for the best. There's a few more volunteers right there. I will take Vagirs because we can upgrade them. Yeah, I shouldn't have allowed them to take so much land. I probably should have broken off much, much sooner. Sungeche's looking okay, though. And now we want to start contemplating other targets. So I am in the middle of Nordlands right now. I'm just going to kind of brush my finger across the space bar to keep myself from taking any further losses to just random people assaulting me and assailing me while I'm riding about. Bulaban is raiding... Uh, Hugu, you are an asshole. I don't like being called back to my own territory like this. And realistically, a Taiga bandit's attacking us. We can pay the pass. Yeah, right. 50 versus 50. I'm going to pull back one more time because I don't think we have the capability to fight that battle appropriately.
Bulaban's already gone. And it's weird, because I have a positive reputation with that guy, but he's still raiding me. It's the strangest thing. I'm gonna manage the garrison for now. And in managing the garrison, I think I'm gonna bring back the knights with me. I need something elite that I can fall back on. It's tough to just ride around in circles with nobody they can fight. So I'll bring out a couple of these guys just in case because we're being victimized by groups that we shouldn't be victimized by. We should also... Oh, I should have been hitting the capitals and doing mercenaries too. I'm going to beat him up, I think, if we can run him down. Let me grab somebody out of the garrison to fight with him. Oh, and you don't want it anymore, do you? You don't want it anymore. You're running away like a little bitch now. Where are you going, pal? Where are you running off to? Yeah, you thought that was going to work for you. God, I really wish I could have run him down, though. All things considered... Ugh. So now the king is coming at us. I don't think the king wants to fight with our garrison, though. I still haven't run him off completely, so he's still going to be around in the future, but I would have liked to have wiped him out in that charge, maybe taking a few less characters and it would have worked out better for me. I guess not. I'm going to convert them all into skirmishers. And how many people do I have garrisoned here right now? We have 52. I've got 100 and something in my party. 101, so we can have 150 something if we get this place kitted out properly. I don't see it happening. Let's manage the garrison one more time, and I'll drop off everybody I can. Nope, oh, I don't want to drop Swati and Footman. Hold on. Swati and Footman stay with me. They need to train for a little while. At least get them up to men-at-arms or something, so that they'll be a little bit more useful. And so I think that's everybody? No, there's Nord veterans right there, so we'll bring them too. And so with what we have in our group right now, Sanjar Khan, Hugu's back. Hugu, you are a bastard, you know that? You're really beginning to frustrate me. I guess we'll go out through the south. Oh, there's Mathel. Tassane, Math what is she? Lady Mathel? I thought you could change your title. I bet you can do it through a readme file somewhere. And so, yeah, she's training... Oh, good, she's training Nordic troops. 47 men right there. I'm not going to concern myself with the defense of any of my lands. I think we've got... Your money or your life. Yeah, we've got Steps Bandits. And so Steps Bandits are a problem. I thought about going south, but apparently since nobody in this kingdom is managing their own territory anymore. They're just kind of riding around, letting themselves be pillaged and plundered. I guess I'll go out through the north. I was going to try and sneak out through the back door before going anywhere else. Let's go to Ravodden. I'm going to try and find some mercenaries. I think that might be a good way to really beef up my forces before anything else terrible happens. We'll also try and recruit from anywhere that we can along the way. Because 200 archers is better than 200 nothing. Six Vagir recruits from there. Tadzamesh, we'll see what they've got for us. Ten right there. And then Ravodden. Let's go to Ravodden and we'll jump into the tavern. Looks like we've got mercenary cavalry and a ransom broker. I don't need the ransom broker, but we'll hire all of the mercenary cavalry right now. And while we're in this place, we might as well grab food. Make a little Mickey D's stop. Give ourselves some nice bloating on the way out. Everybody's been looking thin anyway, so we got to give them some caloric intake so that they're not so... I don't know, they've been looking gaunt or gout. They've been looking very, very skeleton-y, if I can make up my own word lately. Skeletal. I mean, I don't like the word skeletal, so I would go with skeleton -y. It appears as though our main recruiting zone is going to be from the lands of Swadia for now. And that's not bad. If we could get ourselves a hundred or so knights, I think we'd make it out the back end of this thing in really good shape. We'll hire some watchmen just because we can. And because we've got food variety, I don't think anybody's going to break off and go anywhere else based on the fact that they're grumpy with us. I should probably start working on some of these outgoing towns. Make sure that I have good relations with them so that I can continue recruiting. But for now, we'll make one last sweep down and into Rodok territory. 
And that's 77 more men. I don't like doing these recruiting sprees because it leaves me away from my home territory, which always makes me scared. But everything we can put in our back pocket helps us in the future. What do we have here? Anybody? A traveler and some mercenary crossbowmen. I'll take them. We've got the cash, so we may as well. That's going to be the big rallying cry of the next couple episodes, is we have the money, so why not? We're still in the black, we're still making money, so we may as well just take everything we can. And I clicked the wrong thing right there, it'll be okay though. Alright, fantastic. Things are looking a lot better. I'm going to go caravan guards so that we can turn them into mercenary swordsmen. Okay, good. So, Rodox is declared on Nords, which will give them something to think about other than us. And so, what we can really, really hope for at this point is that we'll get an envoy pretty soon who will declare peace. I don't know if we have to ride out and do that through our diplomacy or how that whole system works. Like I said, you're going to have to bear with me on a lot of this because it is going to be a learning experience for me. I don't manage new kingdoms very often, so it's just one of those little things that I'm not used to. We'll take a caravan guard here. Why not? And as with any new kingdom, we may be relying very, very heavily on mercenaries for the foreseeable future. Six more volunteers right there. We'll call all these guys trained crossbowmen with the Swati and footmen. We'll convert them on over. All of these guys are going to be cavalry. And so basically how I'm going to do this from here on out is everything that I train is going to go straight to my garrison. Everything that is cavalry, we're just going to ride around with a giant swarming force of knights because I know that that'll win. Just It's one of those strategies that I try to avoid because I feel like it's cheesy. But at the same time, we might need a nice dose, we need a nice dose of cheesy right now. So we'll just kind of wash that down with everything else. Nobody else ready to... Oh, no, we got an archer right there. Okay, good. I like what we have right now. We have a force that could potentially fight with somebody smaller. And we want to think about who we want to annex at this point. We're going to be looking out for tiny castles that are controlled by Nords or otherwise... So let's have a look at everything along their borders, and while I don't think we can hold it right now, we do want to follow around on the borders of everyone else's conflicts, and we want to be like that little gnat in the backfield that's just constantly bothering people, just nipping at their heels and making sure that they... The Kingdom of Nords has offered us a peace agreement. Absolutely, we accept. And so that leaves us with a little bit of extra time to go in and get ourselves some Nordic recruits. So I might do that. That's bought us a little bit of time. Who are we at war with right now? Only the Kyrgyz. That means we can focus our attention on them a little bit more heavily, and that's good because the Kyrgyz don't have anything to fight us with. The Kyrgyz are kind of weak. They're a little bit flaccid at the moment, and so since they're flaccid, we're going to focus on making them feel a little bit of stiff competition, I guess. Now that we're at peace with the Nords, I'm going to go through and recruit anybody I can from their lands because it is absolutely vital that you get Huskarls to hold all of your castles. Huskarls and Sharpshooters are going to be the two troops of the day. Are we still at the negative with them? Why am I not allowed to... Well, maybe we'll grab some mercenaries then. Caravan guards right there. I've got too many caravan guards right now. I don't want any more. Let's go upstairs and see what they've got for us. Ransom broker and a trabadour. Not interested in any of that. Alright, so let's get ourselves into a battle maybe with some bandits and train these guys up. There's 49 sea raiders right there. Might be a good call to go to war with them. Let's also handle all of our upgrades before we go any further. So we've got a Swati and Footman right there. Seven of them ready to become men-at-arms. Good, good, good. Mercenary Swordsman ready to go, which is also really nice. Call them Skirmishers. But don't call them Nancy. They won't take that. I'm going to say Caravan Guards there. How many caravan guards am I looking at? Seven? Alright. And we'll do a battle right here. Oh, there's 73 troops over there. Available for our grasping. That guy's got like, it's only like seven or eight bandits, but he's got like maybe 73 guys that are all in his little prisoner caravan. 
I don't like fighting uphill as cavalry, and I don't think anybody would who's tactically astute. So I'm gonna have everybody follow me to better land right now. And then we're gonna try and fight this on any little piece of land that we can find. Anything flat that we can find. So this might be a little bit more useful right here, but I'd really like to take this hill if we can manage it. There it is right there. That's what I want. And it does look like we have a couple people coming after us already. I'm going to say infantry right there. Try and get people set up before we go any further. We do have a lot of cavalry, so we should be alright here. Let's send in the cavalry for now. We may take some losses, but it's not irreplaceable from where we're sitting. And I'm going to assume that cavalry are going to probably make up a large proportion of our kills anyways. Since they're the only guys that we have at like weirder higher tiers, I guess. You got to get rid of that guy right there who's just sitting throwing javelins into the battlefield. I'm going to have infantry charge right away. It wasn't unexpected. Yeah, I swung late on that one. Should have swung a little bit sooner. It's like one of those things where if you've played any video game or like any sport or anything like that for a long time, you know that when you've reacted too slowly and you're just like, oh, I'm going to get hit before it even happens. It's just like, well, there it is. Kind of that fatalist approach to thinking, but not necessarily fatalist. It's just you become experienced enough to know when you've screwed up and you're just like, well, there it is. That's going to be a hit. Luckily, I'm armored enough to where I've got a little bit of a buffer zone before anybody can hurt me. And if there's one thing I like when it comes to me dying, it's a buffer zone. One guy left on the hill over here. Hopefully somebody gets him on a drive-by. Borcha tried, but Borcha's terrible, so there it is. This should help out our morale just a slight little bit. And then what we'll do is we're going to dance up in the next episode and we're going to get that guy with 73 people who are all captured. Because they could all potentially be very, very elite troops, which means we could drop some of these little guys in our team. Oh, they're all manhunters and peasants. I mean, while I do really like peasant women and farmers because they become pretty good high tier troops, that would mean I was so, I thought that was a 7 right there, but it's a 2. That's not nearly as enticing. Anyways, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for the first spine-tingling, blood-curdling episode of Running Our Own Kingdom. I don't know if I'm doing it right or wrong yet, but we are going to keep on doing it. Nonetheless, that's going to be my motto of the day, is if you don't know, just keep doing it. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and hi-do.